Welcome everyone, in today's episode we attempt to scratch build Speed Station. Hi everyone, I'm Martin. Welcome to Donington Castle Model Railway. In my previous layout update, I mentioned that the station, uh, the small station on, on the Heritage Line, uh, was going to be modelled after uh, a place called Speen. Uh, Speen being the closest station to Donington Castle. Um, in fact, Speen Station uh, on occasions for its history was known as Speen for Donington. Now, the layout isn't set in a specific location. Um, but I'd like to draw inspiration uh, from places that fit very much with the theme. Uh, and therefore I thought that uh, having a, 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 a kind of a reimagining of, of Speen Station that works for this layout, layout would be a, a good thing to do. So today I'm going to take you through uh, the process of building that from scratch. Um, we're going to kind of go through some research um, and then we're going to look at how we're going to build that station. Um, and in that process, hopefully capture an essence of it, um, even if it is not a faithful reproduction of it. Um, I suspect that in this video, we're gonna get through uh, the kind of the first half of that process. Um, so I imagine there's going to be a part two to this um, at some point, but please uh, come along for the ride as we reimagine a lost station. So our first step is going to be to do a little bit of research. Um, what we want to do is to try and capture uh, speed station even if we're not going to recreate it in accurate detail. Uh, so a good place to do that would be to head over to Speen um, and take a look at what remains of the station. Now um, the Lambourne Valley line uh, closed in the early 70s um, and Speen station uh, although it hadn't been in use for a while at that point um, was still kind of part of that line. Um, so uh, I think that's what 40 years um, Let's uh, go and have a look and see what we can see uh, remains. I, I don't suspect there's going to be much, um, but it's worth a look. Now before we head out onto the ground, and it's a, a little way to Speen Station from here, um, so we want to be fully prepared for what to expect. Let's go look at a map and see what we can glean from that about where the railway would have run and where the station might have been. Now with some abandoned stations, we might need to go back and look at old Ordnance Survey maps. But luckily in this case, we can actually get a good sense from a modern day map like Google Maps. Um, and without even looking at the satellite view as well. Um, on the street map itself, you can actually see the path of the railway as it would have run up from the bottom, uh, across the road, and then into what's now marked as the sidings. Um, so that should be nice and easy to go find on the ground. Okay, here we are on Station Road. The line from Newbury would have come down through there. Uh, that's been where Speen Cutting would have been. Um, and then, as far as I can see, right through the middle of this house and um, across the road over here. Um, and then would have passed up here. So our station would have been somewhere up there um, towards the left-hand side, I believe. So, absolutely nothing left to see today. This is where the level crossing would have been. Again, absolutely nothing to see today. So with nothing remaining on the ground, that means we're gonna to have to use some other sources to do our research. Um, luckily, a lot of the hard work has been done um, and there is a wealth of information on the Lambourne Valley Railway website. Uh, so we can search uh, by station name, so Speen. Um, and then on there, there are lots of uh, pictures that have been gathered together from over the years um, of the station as it has been. Um, so we can see it's a, it's a um, fairly typical um, halt station, single track, um, platform with a couple of buildings on it. Um, lots of information on the, on, the, on the website if you want to go have a read of some of that. Um, so uh, the decoration for the station we can come back to, but we can see very much here that um, just despite the fact that the, the road is now called the sidings, there was no siding there. Uh, the track plan, you can see the, the line coming in across the level crossing and, and past the station. So 
that gives us an awful lot uh, to use um, to build this station. Um, and obviously we can come back um, to the website and, and look anytime we like. So um, let's crack on now with the design. Okay, so as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, this is the area that we're going to be um, putting our new station into. As you can see, there's a very poor prototype. Uh, well, it's it's not such a bad prototype. Um, it would be a poor station if I went with this. Uh, this was my first attempt out of 18mm MDF. I'm not happy with it, um, so this is why we're um, scratch building something. Um, but this uh, is very useful for getting a feeling of, of how the station is going to sit um, in, in the context of the layout. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the, the size of that. Um, we get some platform space there. Um, it fits nicely um, in that gap uh, that we have to work with. So let's move that out of the way and let's get some measurements so we know um, for our station what we're really working with. Um, and if we measure kind of that gap where that station was previously, that's about 60 centimeters or about two feet. Um, so we want to fit nicely within that. Um, and then the, the kind of the narrowest point um, we're looking at about um, we probably want to be no wider than about six centimeters, um, just under two and a half inches. Um, and let's just check at the other end. Yeah, that looks like that's going to work out quite nicely. Okay, so armed with those measurements, I'm going to fire up um, some, some free CAD software called Tinkercad, um, and I'll take you through um, how to use that software to create uh, models that can then be um, transferred onto the laser cutter. This software you can see here is a um, computer-aided design package, um, probably the simplest one um, that, that you can use. Um, it runs in the browser, so there's no software to download, um, and it is quite basic, but it is surprising what you can actually do um, with that software. Now, this isn't going to be a full... Um, tutorial on how to use that software. There are lots of those online, so if you are interested in having a go at some 3D design, then please do go look at that. Um, what you can see here is some um, shapes I've created using those measurements we took to represent the different sections um, of the platform we're going to build. Um, so what I'm demonstrating here is uh, the ramp of the platform. So in basic terms, it's a triangle stuck to a square, and then we use some cutouts uh, to insert some, some finger joints that we're going to use. You can see here one of the cross pieces um, that we're going to um, be using. And say in Tinkercad, you can move all the bits around and make sure that everything kind of lines up. Uh, so we have some platform sections there, again, with some um, holes cut in them uh, so that then the little nodules can stick back up. Uh, this shows uh, the length of straight platform. Uh, so we're going to create uh, two sides and one top, and then we're also going to use uh, that cross piece I showed you before um, to, to run across underneath that platform. Um, you can see the holes are slightly set back from the edge. That means that uh, when we come for assembly, we're going to have a slight lip that we can then use to our advantage. But this design will make a whole lot more sense when you actually see the pieces cut out um, once we run them through the laser cutter. Uh, but the next step uh, for this process is to export these uh, shapes into SVGs and import those SVGs into our Lightburn software, which you would have seen in a previous video. This is now in Lightburn, which is the software that's going to send the instructions to our laser cutter. Um, you can see all of the pieces that we exported from Tinkercad all laid out here. Uh, they're in different colors because they're going to be cut on different materials. Um, so the platform structure itself is going to be cut in two mil wood. Um, the dark red cross piece has been made out of five mil um, plywood um, to provide a bit more strength at those points. You can see here how the pieces have all been nested together uh, to save as much wood as possible. And on the bottom here, these blue items uh, are the brick facing that we're going to put onto the platform, creating exactly the same way as the ones from the episode on retaining walls. 
Now, these are going to be uh, engraved onto one mil card, um, and then they are going to then to be stuck onto the front of the platform. Um, but that will become a bit clearer when you see uh, all the finished pieces. Our pieces are now all off the laser cutter, so let's do a 3D jigsaw puzzle and see if our design's any good. So what have we? We've got lots of cross braces. I'm not sure if we'll need all of them. We've got some of the thicker cross braces that are going to um, fix uh, the different bits of the side together. We've got some platform ramps, a long piece. Uh, I think I'm missing one of those. I might have to cut another one. Uh, we've got a middle section. Couple more platform edges. We've got some of our engraved brick pattern. We definitely don't have enough of that, so I need to do a couple more. Okay, so let's try and assemble one end. So to do that, we're gonna need one of them. Leave them to one side for the moment. Take one of them, one of them. Couple of them. Um, possibly one of them. Okay. So. So at this point you work out um, where you went wrong in your design, if anywhere. Hopefully not, but <laughs> we shall see. Okay, those look like they're going together quite nicely. That's a good start. Um, that piece is gonna go across there. That's gonna join those two together. So let's just pop that down there like that. And then, which way around does this bit go? If that is the right bit. Should be the right bit, but that looks like there is a bit. Why is that not fitting over there? It's definitely right in the wrong way around for this, so that might explain it. Okay, those have gone on. Um, you can see we've got a gap, so we're gonna need to recut that bit, I think, unless, um, that's not the right bit. Let's have a look. Let's see if that one fits instead. Okay, that looks like that might be better. Okay, so that's a much better there. I'm not sure if it's a slightly too long at this end, so we might just need to come back and, um, on this piece, I can just saw that off, um, but for the next one I cut, so I'll just take that into note. Okay, that looks good. Um, I don't know if these are now, I don't think these are now the right pieces. I think that, <laughs> coincidentally enough, is the same piece. That needs to be the same piece, actually. Okay, um, right, let's continue with this bit then. It's going to be easier with that off and that piece in like that. And let's put a couple of these cross braces in. Oh, 
this will be much easier when it's uh, being assembled because I can glue bits as I go. Okay, we just really want to check the fit now, so I'm not going to go too mad. Okay, those should line up there like that. Okay, that's looking good. What about our platform surface? If we put that on, does that line up? No, because I'm putting it in the wrong place. It's supposed to go there. So we don't get overlap. Okay, that looks good. Just give that a of teeth into that, right? And then this bit should fit across there like that. Okay, right, I am pretty happy with that so far. Um, other than this piece here, the only other thing I really need to test, because the other side will just be a, a mirror image of that, is the join between the two long sections. So let's do that. And then the idea was that one of these would then... No, wait! Hold on, it should be one of these. Except, okay, that's the other platform one, the other platform ramp one, sorry. So that, that should go there. Okay, that looks like that is going to be a win as well, if I just... Oh, okay, that's come out of it. Okay, for some reason that why is that not? That might just be it not being square when I'm building it. Okay, it looks fine on the back. Okay, good. Right. Um, so I think that's all going to work. These are just the other end of that, as is that. So that's, we need to check them. They're just more cross braces. And then what about our brick edging? Uh, it's all going to fall apart if I do this, or is it? No, okay, it's not bad. So our brick edging can go on here like that. That looks good. And then if we get the finger joints right, that can go on there. Okay, I am very happy with that. Okay, so this has ended up being flush to the top. Um, but if I put some paving slabs along the top, then that will give us a little bit of a lip. Um, but again, I don't want too big of a lip, I don't think. There, that all looks pretty good. Okay, so minor tweaks needed. I just need to tweak this um, end ramp here. Because um, it needs to be slightly shorter at this end. Um, but whatever this piece is, um, it's the right piece. Um, in terms of the length to here, I'm going to take a millimetre off that. Um, on this one, probably just running a sat, uh, just filing along the bottom there to flatten that edge off is going to be all we need. Um, in fact, I'll do that first. If that gives us a nice finish, uh, then I won't bother changing the design. Um, so I'll pop back in a second. Right, all the pieces have now been print, um, cut correctly. Um, and I've found what I think is the best way of assembling. Um, so start with the cross beams into the sides, uh, then stick the top on. 
Um, same on the ends, hopefully you can see those. So I end up with four individual sections um, and then the only job to do now is to put those together. Um, so for those we use our thicker pieces to just pop in here. You've seen me do that before. Um, attach them together and stick the, the piece on top. Um, <clears throat> and at the end of it we'll have uh, a platform. Um, one other slight uh, tweak I've made um, after seeing getting this far. Um, so what I've done is uh, Let me just show you. So with our brick pattern, I mentioned that we lose our lip. Now the way we can gain that back is if we run another section of brick just along there. So um, because that's cut from two mil wood, um, just a two mil strip, which because our bricks are one mil high, just means two rows of bricks. Um, so we can run that along there and we can take that down the ends on the platforms as well. Um, I've, I've cut them again with uh, like a tapered end um, so we can slot multiple um, kind of pieces together. Um, so that's going to give us um, a little bit of a nicer finish on that. And then our, our stones along the edge of the platform can then just go over the edge of those and give us the, 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 the amount of overhang that we need. One other thing, um, and I'm in the middle of painting these right now, is uh, to give maybe a little bit more interest along the platform, just create some short... Um, Kind of two brick width um, pieces. So again, you'll, you'll see these better when this is all finished. Um, so then we get a kind of a little bit more of an interesting pattern along there. Um, I'm worked out how far apart those are going to be, um, but it's just a little bit of extra extra detail and interest. Okay, right. I'm going to get this glued together. Um, I'm going to continue painting uh, the bricks. Um, I'm going to use exactly the same technique I used in the retaining walls video. Uh, link to which you'll find, I guess it'll be up there, up there. Um, uh, so it, it, again, exactly the same process of, of paint, seal, um, add render, take it off, um, and, then a little, and then a light touch of weathering. Um, so uh, next time I see you, um, oh actually, next time I see you, I will have assembled the whole station. So we'll come to that. Here we have our finished platform that's probably not all in shot. Um, I'm really happy with this. So look at the bottom. So that's the glue's still a little bit wet, so I'm not going to um, stress test it too much. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously, we've got to put the edging on, and we've got to decorate it. Um, but let's put it on the layout and just check that it fits in the space it's supposed to. So this is our old MDF platform here that I wasn't very happy with. So let's get rid of that and let's pop this one in. I mean, for a first attempt at designing and building a platform, I'm pretty happy with that, I have to say. Um, need to uh, check some, put something with outside cylinders along there just so I can make sure we've got enough clearance. But um, yeah, uh, Spin Halt or Spin Station is coming along quite nicely. Okay, so for platform edging, I found some of this stuff. Uh, it's a Will's kit, uh, Victoria Stone paving. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just uh, slice these into rows um, and then we can line those up along the edge of the platform. That's gonna give us a little bit of an uneven um, look to it as well um, because this isn't, uh, this isn't totally even in the way that this has been produced. So um, we'll need to give these a bit of a paint, um, but we'll see how we go. So nothing groundbreaking, steel rule, knife, um, and a filing block just to take the edge off. Um, and just working my way down that sheet to create some little strips. Okay, so I think I've got enough um, sections now to run along the front of the platform. So I'll just put those to one side, they can be painted up. Um, a few little bits um, we might use to fill in some gaps. Next job is to put a surface on the rest of the platform. Um, and I'm gonna give tiling grout a go for this. Um, I've used it quite successfully on Lamborn um, and on the hard standing on uh, the engine shed. Uh, so I've just masked off the edge uh, where these strips are gonna go. I'm then just gonna put some PVA on, uh, put some tiling grout over the top, um, and then see how we can build up a little bit of a layer 
um, so that it kind of matches up to the edge um, of these because there's a about a mil I'd reckon there uh, that we need to come up. Uh, it's a technique I've seen Richard uh, use on his platforms at Everard Junction, uh, so there will be a link up there to that episode. Um, but uh, I'm going to try it my way and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, so messy modelling alert here. Um, this is where I transferred over here onto some old cardboard. So I've just got some PVA, neat PVA gone over the top of it. Um, off cut from the laser cutter just to smooth it out. Um, obviously right up to the edge of the masking tape, doesn't matter too much if it goes over, I hope. Um, I then got my tiling grout dispensed into a little pot and a old spoon. Um, and I'm just gonna go over the top of that. Okay, so let's give this a go. Um, I'll probably do this in hyperlapse, uh, so who knows uh, how this is going to go and how messy it's going to be. Uh, once I've put the grout down, I'm going to use the other bit of the offcut uh, just to try and get a roughly flat surface. Um, but obviously we want to try and build it up a little bit. Um, we'll see how we go. Okay, and as you can see, I've made an absolute mess. Um, there might be a bad way of doing that, but you know what, that's actually quite fun, so, yeah. Um, I've kind of left it more kind of textured rather than less, uh, with the idea being that we want to try and get um, a bit of a textured surface on there, um, and we can always come back at the end and kind of give it a sand down to, to smooth it out if needed, um, whereas it's much harder to kind of make it a bit rougher, so. Um, I think it's safe to say that that's not particularly smooth. What I'm going to do now is I will spray with wet water um, and then just do a, a PVA water mix over the top of it, not too much because I don't want to saturate the wood, um, just to kind of help that top layer to stick. Um, obviously there's a big thick layer of PVA on there anyway, but um, from other things I've done I've found that kind of going over the top is, um, is, is also useful as well. Uh, that means we're not going to be able to touch it for probably a couple of days at this time of year, but um, we we'll see how we get on. Uh, so for those of you who are new to this sort of thing, wet water is just uh, water with a little bit of washing up liquid. I'll break surface tension and all that. So we'll just go over the top of that. You'll see that we'll know when we've done it because the grout will turn a little bit darker. We can also spot a few patches we've missed. So what I'll do at this point is just go over there, this is a say. Don't try and smooth this down after you've done this because with the wet grout you'll just make an awful mess. Um, I'm sure I don't know that from my own bitter experience. If we do have any gaps at the end we can always use a bit of paint to fill them in. Uh, one thing I could have done as well is, is painted the wood grey first, uh, then any gaps in, in this layer wouldn't come through. Uh, but we're looking for a reasonably thick layer um, given the platform edging, so um, I'm not too worried about that, and so we can always touch it up at the end. Okay, right, let's give those new bits a bit of a spray down. That'll just help it to, um, to run together as well and to form a little bit of a smooth the surface and then the bit to be really careful of because if you flood this too violently you'll move all the grout around and it'll become a mess so we just want to and obviously on a slope it is going to slightly wash some of that grout down that slope so just be really mindful of that so we'll go over the top this is just a rough 50 50 mix PVA and water that I just always have on hand. Again, a splash of washing up liquid in there. And what we'll do is we'll just let that spread out. We don't want to saturate it, as I said. Let that spread out a bit, and then we'll see where we might need to come back over with in a second. Okay, so we can see that started to spread out a little bit. Um, I'm just going to give it a little bit more water because I think there's enough glue there. I think it just needs to be encouraged to spread, which 
a mist like this will do. Get any luck. Just leave that just to run together. You can already start to see that, that making a difference. Okay, uh, so what to do with this? Um, if this were an episode of Blue Peter, you'd be told to leave this uh, in the airing cupboard, much to the horror of the other people in the house. Um, for those of you maybe watching from outside of the UK, uh, then Blue Peter, which I keep referencing, um, is a kids' TV program where they used to um, show you how to make things with household items. There were certain techniques that popped up time and again, and so they became kind of um, ingrained in your mind. Um, and so anyone who's watching this who, who watched Blue Peter will um, no doubt recognize some of those. Uh, for me, uh, I'm just going to move it out of this position very carefully into one away from the kind of the loose bits of glue and stuff so that it doesn't accidentally <laughs> stick itself to the cardboard. Um, and then keep an eye on it. Uh, I reckon within kind of a few hours it's going to be safe um, to kind of move around a little bit more um, but I'm going to keep it, um, well we'll see how it goes but I'm, I'm imagining at least a day uh, before we can get on to, to sand this down. It is now actually one week since I filmed the last bit of video and the main reason for that is that um, after a couple of days once the grout had dried it became fairly obvious that I hadn't used a thick enough layer on there. Uh, so off camera I uh, went back over using exactly the same technique um, and, and made a much thicker layer on there. Um, as you can see the surface texture is much rougher than we like at this point um, but we have now got a good coverage over all of this um, and we're going to be in a position to sand that down in a second. Um, you might not be able to see particularly well on camera but if we now start to peel the masking tape back uh, which is going to take a little bit of effort I think to do that so I'll do that in a second uh, we can see that we've got a nice um, gap at the edge here um, which means that our paving slabs that we're going to fix are going to be pretty much level with the, the surface of the grout. So next step uh, get this tape off hopefully um, and then start to just slightly sand the top down um, just to even this out a bit. Um, we don't want too smooth the surface, uh, but at the moment um, <laughs> at scale, this would be quite a, a mountainous terrain to walk over. So we just need to um, take that down a little bit with a bit of sanding. So I'll be back in this, back shortly. Okay, so that's the tape off. Um, I found the easiest technique was to peel from the front towards the back rather than to kind of try and run up. Uh, if you try and run up, the, the masking tape tends to snap off. Um, but if you kind of lift this way, uh, that, that seems to, to, to do a nice job and leaves this nice clean line there. Um, just popping the slabs uh, that are in the middle of being painted at the moment, um, so excuse their appearance. They're going to fit, as you see, very nicely on there. Remembering we're going to have um, some brick running underneath there so the so the lip on that's not going to be as pronounced as it looks right now. Uh, so I'm happy with how that's looking um, but now I need to just get on and, and just kind of sand down this top surface to make that a bit smoother uh, but otherwise I'm I'm really happy with how that's turned out. Okay so I'm just starting out with some 40 grit sandpaper to start just to take um, I'll try not to, <laughs> to sand while I'm talking because you won't be able to hear me. Um, I'm just trying to take the, the kind of the major lumps and bumps off the top with this um, and then we'll go to a, a finer grit in a, in a minute. Um. But as you can see, um, even that, that kind of initial sanding starting to again to give us a little bit more texture into the surface here, which I think is looking really good. We can obviously add to that um, as, as we go. But. Uh, I'll get on and uh, do the rest of this with this grade uh, of sandpaper and then I'll come back um, with the next coat. This is now our surface after just the 40 grit. Um, it creates a little bit of dust on the surface so I'm just using a, some water just to spray on that and just then to wipe uh, that clear of any of that dust. Um, and then I will then uh, go with a slightly uh, higher grit. So I've now been over this with some 120 um, and it, this is now starting to feel, um, to the touch at least, much smoother uh, and much more even. Um, but you can see that there's still plenty of variation in here with kind of higher and lower um, areas. Um, I think if we were doing um, a modern image platform then this would probably be too rough uh, for a lot of places, particularly a, a kind of a main station. Um, 
but for what we're trying to model here, um, I think this unevenness um, and this kind of age that appears to be in the surface, I think is really good. Um, next step will be uh, to finish painting up the slabs and get those um, put along to finish painting up our brickwork and get that fixed on the front. Um, and then we'll think about what we're going to do about weathering. Um, I'm probably going to go over this with the airbrush um, just to kind of give it a little bit um, more variation and a little bit of kind of some dark tones. Um, and then we'll do some weathering on the brickwork once that's in place. Um, but I'm pretty, for, for a first attempt at that, I'm pretty pleased with how that's uh, turned out. So here we are with our paving slabs along the, as the edging. Um, I painted these in a dark grey enamel, then just went back over the top, very lightly dry brushing with a, a lighter grey. I'm going to finish the effect um, with obviously a bit of airbrushing over the top um, and then possibly a little bit of weathering powder just to give them a little bit more definition. Uh, but we'll see how all that turns out. So we've got a tiny drop of Vallejo German Black Brown in the airbrush, um, obviously with some thinners. Um, I'm going to put my mask and the airbrush on in a second so you won't be able to hear me. Um, I'm just going to go over and give this um, ever so slight um, dusting um, of that. And then hopefully that will bring out a little bit more of the variation in that and just tone down that, that surface a little bit. But we'll see how we get on. Okay, now for me it's really tempting uh, to put too much paint down, so that's why I only go for a tiny amount of the airbrush because it then kind of really stops me from going too far with it. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how that, it's, it's a very subtle effect and I don't know how much that comes across on the camera, but you can see that we've just darkened the tones down a little bit. Um, I think still a little bit of weathering powder, um, just to give a little bit more variation along these paving slabs would be good. So it's now time for the big reveal. Uh, the only thing I've uh, really done on this since you last saw it is I masked off the edge of the paving slabs um, and got a sponge and a little bit of white uh, acrylic and just went along the edge of that just to give a very fine line to, to the edge there. Um, as certainly in the later years of Speed Station, um, there was wa a white line along the edge of the platform. But without any further ado, let's reveal my first attempt at scratch building a platform. And there it is. Um, obviously the platform is not finished, um, but it's taken quite a while to get to this point. So uh, this is where I'm going to leave it for today. But let me just give you a little bit of a close up so you can see um, it in a little bit more detail. So I'm still very inexperienced as a modeler. So my philosophy um, is always um, to try and do a good first attempt at something. Um, and then as I learn more and become more experienced, come back and revisit it uh, and see if I can apply that, that kind of additional knowledge and, and kind of skills to, to something. So uh, this is very much my, my kind of first attempt, uh, particularly with weathering on the brick. Um, it doesn't look too bad, I don't think, uh, but it's certainly something I'll come back and revisit once I, I learn a bit more about that. But let's just give you a quick um, tour along the length of the platform just so you can see how it's turned out. So as you can see, the grouse itself is actually, uh, and just that very light airbrushing has given us lots of natural variation on there. Um, and that certainly looks to me like a, um, a platform that uh, hasn't seen much love in a lot of years, uh, which is exactly the look we were going for um, with this one. So still a lot of work to do to make this look like um, Speed Station. Um, all the buildings, um, station signs, and all the decoration. Um, but that will come um, soon, hopefully. Okay, let's leave things there for today. Uh, in a future video, we'll look at building some of the um, station buildings and adding some of the detail on, onto the station. Um, but I think we've made really good progress today um, from, from pretty much nothing other than a really bad uh, MDF template. Um, we've gone through an entire process today of um, 
how to design our platforms, um, creating a, a modular kit, um, cutting that on the laser cutter, um, assembling it, painting it, uh, getting a platform surface on there. Um, and now it uh, very much looks like uh, a station uh, and, and kind of sits nicely within the context of the, the layout and, and the heritage line in particular. So I'm really pleased with what we've done. This is the first time I've ever attempted uh, building anything like this. Okay, and I hope you got something useful out of this video as well. Uh, for me, uh, as, as a fairly new um, modeler, um, the term scratch building can often be quite uh, a fearful one. Uh, we see these uh, amazing creations uh, we feel like we instantly have to, that if we're going to start scratch building, then we instantly have to kind of live up to, um, to that. Um, hopefully today's video has showed that it's possible to begin scratch building on a, on a fairly small scale um, and also to use some of the tools and techniques that are available to you. Um, in the past, modelers didn't have the ability to use 3D printing and laser cutting and things like that to, to aid their work. Um, now, much more we have access to, to this kind of technology and, and, and applying those to our workflows and our processes are, I think are really good um, things to be doing uh, and learning how to do. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's been, uh, again, another learning experience um, and I look forward to continuing the growth of Speen Station uh, in a future video. But thank you very much uh, for joining today. Um, please do subscribe if you'd like to be kept up to date uh, with all the news from the channel. Uh, particular when we get to uh, part two of this video. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all in a future video and bye bye.